as you experts work in treating, eliminating hepatitis, uh, one of the messages that I want to give you is uh, from my talk, and I hope the only take home message is that many of uh, hepatitis C in particular, in many cultures and settings, uh, is because of uh, unsafe injections, therapeutic injections, medical injections, however you want to put it. So uh, I purposely did not put uh, uh, an overview slide because my presentation is a hodgepodge. I will jump from one slide to other, and, uh, but uh, uh, I can answer questions later whenever there is a break or after the session. So I don't have any conflict of interest. Uh, it's a very popular number if, for those who work in uh, injection or injection safety. Calculated in uh, early 2000 that 16 billion injections are provided worldwide. And out of those 16 billion injections, 90% are therapeutic injections or medical injections. 10% are uh, immunization and other injections. Uh, so uh, what drives uh, unnecessary injections? Uh, there are three drivers. Number one is the prescriber, who could be trained or untrained depending on the setting and culture. The second driver is the provider, again, a nurse or a paramedic in many settings, trained or untrained, or totally no training at all uh, in some settings. Then the third driver of unnecessary injections are patients uh, as well as communities. In many cultures, a uh, patient is accompanied by a family member, so that is what we are referring to when we say communities. So some of the reasons based on the research and literature available uh, for unnecessary injections. Injections are stronger. They provide quick relief, and medically they do. Uh, obviously, medically and otherwise, they work faster. Uh, in many cultures, uh, the sign of pain is related to efficacy of the treatment. And uh, in developed countries, it is related to a developed technology. Healthcare workers think that the patient will not take the medicine, so give him or her an injection. And, and in many settings, in many settings, there is literature available that there is a financial motive, and that is one of the ulterior motive of the healthcare provider, both trained and untrained, to prescribe an injection. A prescription with an injection uh, in private settings, I'm not talking about public settings, in private settings, a prescription with an injection, uh, the practitioner or the prescriber charges more money compared to a prescription in which an injection is not written. So these are some of the reasons for unnecessary, in unnecessary injections. Uh, reason for unsafe injections, meaning mostly reuse, lack of awareness among healthcare providers uh, that reuse uh, leads to bloodborne infection, particularly hepatitis B, C, or HIV in some cases. The change, they just, in some settings, they just change the needle and they think that that's fine to do it. There is an ulterior motive to save the money on the syringe because it's a package deal in many settings. When a patient comes to a private practitioner in a slum area in Machar colony where MSF is doing exemplary work, uh, the prescription includes uh, some tablets, a syrup in a plastic bag, and an injection from the clinic. So uh, when there is not an injection written in the prescription, the charges change. So because the syringe often is also provided from the clinic, uh, so that leads to saving money and reusing the syringe uh, more than many times, reusing the needle more than many times, uh, more than one time. In some situations, it when it becomes completely blunt and the patient uh, complains of pain, shouts, then they change the, uh, the, the needle. In public settings in many parts of the world, lack of supplies have led, to, and there is documentation that lack of supplies in public health settings, primary health care settings, basic health units have led to reuse of injection equipment. Uh, in the early 2000, that was one of the key reasons of uh, reuse in the immunization program. 
when they ran out of syring needle uh, syringes, they still use the same immunization needles. Uh, lack of disposal or uh, uh, sharps management system, healthcare waste management system, if not available, many a times the, the, that leads to reuse as well. So I will uh, not spend much time on it, but there is uh, literature and data available from uh, some of the high burden countries, Egypt, India, Uganda, these are the global campaign countries that WHO is working with. Uh, not going to spend much time on it uh, as uh, there is substantial progress. And uh, one of the positive things in Egypt right now is that we just finished the baseline injection safety assessment in eight governorates. And uh, although the findings are not out yet, but uh, uh, we are told that reuse was not for much, the reuse was not found. So good thing. In India, uh, Unsafe injections have, outbreaks have been associated with hepatitis B because of medical injections. Pakistan is a star country, my country, because of unsafe injections, hepatitis C in particular. Uh, HIV outbreak in Cambodia not long ago, two years ago, was associated because of uh, unsafe injections in uh, rural settings. Uh, sharp injuries among uh, hospital workers by procedure, if you look uh, here, so... <laughs> Uh, anyway, the 23% because of uh, injections. So uh, for your information, the first review was conducted, which I mentioned 16 billion injections in 2000. Uh, it mentioned that 40% injections were given, 40% uh, given with use injections equipment and up to 70% in some countries. L more than half the injections were unnecessary. It led to uh, an astronomical number of uh, hepatitis B, hepatitis C, and HIV infections. Then uh, in 2010, another review used in the same data sets, I believe, was conducted uh, by a researcher and published in, in Canada. And uh, so it's not exactly the same if you look at the right side or, yeah, right side. Proportion of reuse, according to this uh, study, came down to 5.5%. Earlier it was 40%, came down to 5.5%. Uh, number of uh, infections because of unsafe injections also came down. So hepatitis B came down, and it was attributed to uh, an aggressive immunization campaign against hepatitis as well. And overall uh, reduction uh, in reuse was uh, credited to the global injection safety uh, efforts as well. Uh, Region-wise, again, from the same side, if you look uh, on your left side, uh, in the EMRO region, if, if, it's, sorry, CRO, Southeast Asia region, proportion of, of uh, reuse of injections was 75%. In 2010 uh, study, it came down to 14%. In the EMRO region, reuse of, uh, pro proportion of reuse of injections was 70% and it came down to 57%. In both these cases, this data was heavily influenced because of presence of Egypt and Pakistan. Then uh, in the Western Pacific region, th from 30% to 17% and remained almost the same in the African region. WHO initiated uh, the safe inj uh, its injection safety program in uh, late 1990s, early 2000, and formed the Safe Injection Global Network, which, was, is a co which is a coalition of stakeholders aiming to achieve a safe and appropriate use of injections worldwide. So uh, it was thought that immunization or EPI is a winnable war, so a lot of efforts were put in, and uh, uh, this uh, policy statement came out uh, in early 2000, which uh, suggests recommended that using auto disabled syringes in the immunization program, which is now globally used uh, in all member states, maybe in, in, in one or two not, but out of 194 WHO member states, all member states are using these uh, auto disabled syringes, which are basically syringes, as many of you know, uh, become uh, disabled after single use. Uh, at that time, it was complemented with this bundling uh, mechanism, meaning syringes, number of vials, shaft boxes, everything was provided uh, as part of this campaign. Many tools were developed during this time, some of them revised later, uh, the aid memoir on your left or the baseline injection safety assessment tool 
was revised uh, in 2008, and uh, it's now being reused in the WHO pilot countries as well. So during that time, the recommendations were the same, that formulating policies and plans for safe and appropriate use of injections. It, it is the government uh, or the stakeholders in the country have to do it. WHO provides uh, technical support and, if possible, some, in some cases, financial support. Ensuring quality and safety of injection equipment, facilitating equitable access to injection equipment, and uh, achieving rational use of injections. So in many countries, even now, the WHO's essential drug list is not used, not implemented, uh, one of the reasons for irrational use of injections. Country support was provided in many countries from Burkina Faso to Syria to US, India, Pakistan, and Ethiopia. Some of this is still available uh, on the injection safety web page. Annual sign meetings were uh, conducted uh, from uh, 1998 till 2010 with the objective to review progress that was achieved till, achieved till that time, exchanging information, and identifying coming issues and future challenges. So in 2015, 13 or 14, this process was initiated and WHO uh, launched the revised in, or the new injection safety guidelines. And one of the key recommendations, although based on uh, weak uh, evidence, but based on what is available on ground and what is happening on the ground, it was recommended that uh, all member states and particularly high burden countries should switch to use of reuse prevention syringes for uh, therapeutic or medical injections. Uh, the small, the sub-bullet is part of the guideline, but not a key recommendation because of uh, cost involved to it. Use syringes with sharp injury protection feature wherever possible. Call to country, countries to develop standards for rational use of injections and ensure supply call to countries to develop national policies and implementation strategies and special focus on curative settings. These last two bullets were new guidelines called to uh, partners to fund procurement of safety engineer syringes. For example, if Global Fund is funding a program of harm reduction uh, for PWIDs, we would like them to uh, suggest to in, on ground to use or use prevention syringes. Call to industry to switch to safety engineer syringes. Uh, in many parts, in, de in developed countries, it is mandatory to have them. But uh, we are lucky that, for example, in India, the union ministry is working and has given four years time to the industry. There are 28 manufacturers, and they have been given three years time to switch to produce, producing these syringes. Okay. So quickly, the, as I said, uh, uh, this table basically summarizes the cost because when reuse prevention syringes were recommended, the issue, the perception or reality was that the cost, but the cost of a reuse prevention syringe is almost at par with the conventional syringe, except for if you look at uh, the 24 cents, which is for uh, 0.24 cents, which is for uh, sharp in in syringes with sharp injury protection feature. So that cost uh, has still not come down and it's an impediment. Uh, some of the features, if in case you are not aware, uh, the pink is the shield which comes on the needle. Uh, this one uh, is uh, it, the needle retracts inside the barrel. In the immunization syringes, there is a locking mechanism which locks the syringe. And in some cases, the barrel uh, or the plunger breaks down. So, so these are some of the features of these safety engineer syringes. As I said, the guidelines, uh, these are the WHO 25 uh, 2015 guidelines. Uh, comprehensive guidelines for countries to adopt to. We have uh, this new global uh, campaign uh, logo, get the point, make smart injection choices. And uh, we, as I said, that we have three pilot countries, India, Egypt, and Uganda. Uh, it's a little bit busy slide, but quickly we have set these key process indicators uh, for the global campaign for these countries to adopt because we want to maintain a standard process it starts from in-depth review of data, a baseline, uh, baseline injection safety assessment, inventory of policies leading to a national policy if there is no policy, uh, economic modeling, uh, an economic modeling study done in 2013 and 14 uh, commissioned by WHO, the preliminary findings suggest that for each one 
dollar invested in uh, injection safety leads to $14 saving in healthcare settings. And then there is a assessment of healthcare waste management, engaging the industry to develop uh, safety engineer syringes in the country, a communication campaign, and then an end of project evaluation. It's a three year campaign in these three pilot countries. So we have in the process of developing some of these new tools, uh, which will be available online and for anybody to adopt to. So uh, they can be pasted, distributed, however you want to use them or one country wants to use them. So, so quickly, what there was a WHO, it is a WHO definition that a safe injection uh, does not harm the recipient, does not expose the provider to risks and does not result in ways that is dangerous for the community or other people. And then there are these seven steps as part of the injection best practices. Clean workspace, hand hygiene, sterile safety equipment, sterile vial because use of multi-dose vial is still very common. Cleaning of skin, uh, appropriate collection of shops and appropriate waste management. The eighth step that have, we have added into it and uh, it's related and based on uh, uh, research is that patient demand for safe injections. And we have researched that, that uh, if we, because in many settings and cultures, uh, the patient usually does not question the provider about the need of the injection or the type of the syringe. They are, the social structure is such that they are intimidated to ask questions. So empowering the patient to question the need of an injection and the type of syringe if from the provider the patient asks because in many settings the provider brings the syringe or injection prepared from behind a counter and the patient is not aware of what kind of injection that is. So we want to empower the patient and we have tried it and it has worked that uh, if you empower the patient about uh, questioning the need of an injection and the type of syringe, it has made an impact. So uh, thank you very much and uh, Let's join hands uh, in our global injection safety campaign in making injection safer.